it's not just the carbohydrates causing the problem with insulin resistance. That is a very important piece, but the carbohydrate intolerance, the inability to utilize carbohydrates is the side effect. That is the downstream impact. Okay, what happens is insulin resistance is an inflammatory condition. And it turns out that we have some things in our diet accessible to us that can have powerful impacts on this. And I'm gonna talk about mustard specifically. Okay, now I'll cut right to the chase first and foremost. With mustard, it's really, really, really important that you're not using just regular yellow mustard. Okay, look on the ingredients and it has to say something like mustard seed or ground mustard seeds. You wanna go for like the stone ground mustard or Dijon mustard because the active components are stabilized and preserved in those types of mustard. Okay, it's really important. We'll talk about how to use it, but the evidence on how it's affecting glucose and insulin dynamics, in addition to appetite and fat loss, is super fascinating. So let's go ahead and dive into it. I also put a link down below for a probiotic that I recommend called Seed. That is a 25% off discount link for what is called a symbiotic. It's a prebiotic and a probiotic combined into one capsule. So that way you're getting the entire probiotic effect and it's getting distributed where it needs to. So potential colonization into the large intestine where we're ideally wanting it. And then the prebiotic effect, so you have a symbiotic, so a capsule inside of a capsule. Really cool technology, and that's why I've stood behind them for so many years, and they've been on this channel. I take two of them daily, and I have for the last, I guess, about four and a half, five years. So I wouldn't leave home without it, quite frankly. So that link is down below for that 25% off discount link. So back to the mustard. I'm gonna talk about this interesting study first, and then we'll kind of back up and look at the other data, because I wanna give you a pragmatic way to use this. Like, how do you use mustard to help you with insulin resistance? Well, first off, we need to look at like what it's doing. And for that, we look at a rodent model study, which we don't necessarily take to the bank entirely, but it's opening up a new can of worms of research. This study was published in Biochemical and Molecular Toxicology. So it was in rats. They gave these rats a diet that would basically make them diabetic. Like they were trying to make them metabolically unhealthy in this case. And what they did is they gave them the active component of mustard, this allele isothiocyanate, or AITC, which sounds chemically and synthetic, but it's not. It's in these mustard seeds. That's what makes mustard so powerful, which we can talk more about, but I've done many videos on that you've probably seen. But how it impacts, it's impacted these rats from an insulin resistance perspective was wild. It increased what is called GLUT2 transporters. So GLUT2 transporters do a lot of things, but a lot of what they do is actually transport glucose into the liver and ultimately help with pancreatic beta cell signaling. So whereas like a GLUT4 transporter is going to go translocate to the surface of a cell and bring glucose into the cell to be used for fuel. Whereas GLUT2 is much more important for the proper release of insulin. If we don't have these glucose transporters, then the liver can't receive the glucose properly and therefore can't send the signal to the pancreas. So this is really, really important and it's one area that can potentially get disrupted with insulin resistance. But more importantly than just that, what they saw with this is that these rats' glucose levels Level went down significantly while simultaneously increasing their antioxidant capacity. They produced more antioxidants in their body. So that's the other piece, right? So with insulin resistance, you have a high degree of oxidative stress. Because the carbohydrates and the sugars aren't able to be utilized, you have a high degree of advanced glycation. You have uh, all these other things that are creating more oxidative stress and damage. So when you increase your antioxidant abilities, then you are improving these things. Now, the other piece that was really interesting is it increased PPAR. It increased the overall ability for the cell to utilize fats better, which not only can help with fat loss, but it's helping the overall, what is called fuel partitioning, the ability for the cell to switch back and forth between glucose and fat that is part of metabolics. But having that flexibility is really, really, really important. Now, that makes a lot of sense. We see that it helps directly with the glucose side of things. But from the inflammation side is where we start to see more fascinating stuff. This study was published in the journal Cellular and Molecular Medicine, and they gave rodents in this case, once again, a very high fat, high calorie diet to make them inflamed, okay? And there was a two-arm study. They had the rodent model study and an in vitro portion where they actually looked at cells. They found that in models in vitro where they stimulated more in the way of lipopolysaccharides, which are inflammatory molecules that leak out of our gut and create chronic inflammation, AITC would actually decrease the inflammatory response. 
So it actually turned down inflammation that was responding to just stress in the body. This is really important for us to know as humans. It also reduced the expression of pro-inflammatory genes. So there was less like roots of inflammation to begin and did this by increasing something called NRF2. All of this has sounded like gobbledygook. I hope that you're sticking with me because the basics of it is this AITC in mustard helps insulin signaling. It helps glucose get into the liver properly and it helps inflammation be controlled by our own body versus an anti-inflammatory or certain other things that we take in. So we have a really powerful overall system here. Now, what makes this AITC so powerful is its ability to act on so many different receptor sites, but namely it activates TRPA1, which is a receptor that receives signals from pungent, almost irritants. If you could describe mustard, I would describe it as pungent and, and irritant. It's like spicy, it's pungent, it's vinegary, all these different things, right? And that is why it's activating the nervous system in such a way. So this whole thing and its benefit when it comes down to insulin resistance has to do with activating our central nervous system in such a way to where we use fuels slightly different. It's so wild. It's the same way that like spicy food can actually create more body heat, create this dietary induced thermogenesis. The interesting nature of mustard with its pungentness and its compounds that are active in the seeds, it actually changes some cellular function and changes fat cell function. There's even an e uh, evidence that it can slow the maturation of a fat cell so a fat cell won't grow so much. But the biggest piece out of all, and I've talked about this in many videos, but just in case you haven't seen it, is it curbs the appetite significantly. And that is why it's such a powerful diet tool. So all this cool mechanistic stuff I talk about is great, but what does it actually matter to you? It might have this impact inside your body, but what you're gonna notice when you use good quality mustard is you probably eat less food. You probably feel like you're getting more satisfaction. Sensory satisfaction is the word that the study actually used specifically. More sensory satisfaction from the food that you eat because you're activating your nervous system so much, it's almost like kicked into overdrive and it's like, hey, thanks for the sensory like overload, I'm not hungry anymore. And we all know that if you eat a little bit less, you're gonna be able to get a grip on the inflammation, you're gonna get a grip on that insulin signaling, you're gonna get a grip on the insulin resistance overall. So it starts from an inflammatory level. So I don't want you to sit here thinking it's all carbohydrates all the time. You want to get your body to a point where it can handle carbohydrates. You don't wanna enable it to never be able to use them. I would rather use something like mustard with a little bit of carbohydrates and increase my body's ability to use those carbohydrates properly. Because I think we can change the tune of how we feel about carbs if our body actually used them properly, rather than just being a person that stores them every time you eat them because you don't process them well. So as always, keep it locked here on my channel. See you tomorrow.